Have you ever had a rear shock that's gone a little bit wobbly on its mountings, uh, despite the fact the bolts that hold it into the bike are actually tight? Well, that's because the bushes that actually press into the shock body themselves will have worn out. They are designed to wear in use. Now, today we're gonna show you all the different options you have for your shock that you have on your bike, how you measure up to get the new ones yourself and how to install them. Most rear shocks have a fairly similar layout. You have an eyelet at each end, you have the shock absorber, and you may or may not have a piggyback. Now this will be the same whether you have an air shock like this one or a coil shock like this one. Now when you mount these into a bike, you have the bolt that holds them in place, you have the hardware that passes through the shock itself, and then you have the actual bush that passes into the shock. So these are pressed in place, and they're designed to be a very close fit, but to allow that hardware to rotate slightly as both the shock compresses and the rear of the bike actually moves. Now, as you ride the bike and things are compressing, these will actually wear over time. They're designed to do so. So at some point, your shock will get a little bit rattly in its mounting. So today's video, we're gonna show you how to measure the correct ones for your particular shock, how you push them out, and how you fit the new ones in place. So when it comes to shock sizing, there's quite a few measurements out there and they can be quite confusing. Uh, so you'll hear about the shock stroke, obviously not relevant for this video, and you get the eye to eye measurement. So that is the physical length between the eyelets at both ends. Now the eyelets themselves are what you wanna be paying attention to here. Now on virtually every modern day shock available, this diameter will be 12.7 millimeters. So all the hardware I've got here is to fit in these shocks. In fact, all three of these shocks here, this one's Marzocchi, this one's Fox, and this one is fast suspension. They all have the 12.7 millimeters. Now you, there will be some exceptions in the market, but broadly speaking, it's 12.7 millimeters for everything. Uh, Pre-2010, some shocks had 12 millimeters, uh, and Rock Shocks ones that date back to the mid 90s up until early 2000s had tiny little 10 millimeter ones. Uh, now you've got to imagine that on the inside of those, you can have smaller shock bolts, smaller hardware, uh, generally less support. So the bigger it is, that 12.7 millimeter is a good thing and your bike more than likely has that size. And the last thing to reference is the Trunnion mounted star system that you might have seen on some bikes. Uh, in fact, there's a bike on screen, you can see that I made a video on GMBN recently that had a Trunnion mounted shock. Now the difference between them is instead of having eyelets at both ends, like you see on conventional shocks, on a trunnion mount, it will lack the eyelet at the bigger end of the shock, and instead, the shock body will come out all the way to the end, and the actual mounting will be in the shock body itself, so the bolts will screw into the shock body. Now, designers have done this uh, basically to ensure the consistency between all lengths of shock, despite how much travel it has. So, for example, if you had a shock that the overall length is smaller, typically, you're gonna have a smaller body size on it as well, which means you're gonna get inconsistencies in the damping behavior. But by having the trunnion mount, the actual body can be the same size as a longer shock. Uh, you just lack having this sort of fitting at the top and you mount directly into the body itself. Uh, so kind of an ingenious approach to making sure that all lengths of shock maintain the same feel. And then there's the type of bush that goes into the actual shock itself. Now you get two major types. You get the poly, um, sometimes known as an IGUS style self-lubricating, and you get the DU, which is a dry, unlubricated metal version. So they're very slightly different. Now you tend to see these ones on Rock Shock shocks, and you tend to see these ones on Marzocchi and Fox. Uh, though you can use whatever you want on whatever shock, because the fitting is still the same. Now, what is the difference between them then, I hear you say? So the advantages of using the poly style, well, they're easy to fit and they're easy to remove because the fact that they're in two pieces and they push in, they're very easy to hook one out using a screwdriver and quite often you can push them back in and at a push without even having a vise, you could use a tool like these uh, to push them in place nicely in the shock. So that's very convenient. However, they do wear out much faster. So it kind of goes both ways there, uh, but as I said, uh, Marzocchi and Fox spec those typically as standard. On the RockShox shocks, you have these slightly heavier duty uh, appearing, anyway, metal ones. So these are DU. The downside is when these ones wear out, they will slightly wear your shock hardware. They'll last longer, but when they do, uh, the bolts that pass through can get scored and stuff. So it's up to you to manage when they're worn, replace them. Uh, and for replacing them, you will need a tool like this. Uh, it's a very simple tool. I'm gonna to show you how to use it, uh, but a sound investment if you like to work on your bikes at home, because it does mean whatever system you have, you can easily change them. 
Okay, a little bit about the hardware itself. So you obviously have your different types of bush that go into the shock. You have the poly and you have the DU one there. And then within that, you have your metal hardware that passes through. Uh, so this is known as a heavy duty unit. Now these are probably the most common ones out there and in use, it might resemble something like this. So you'd have the actual metal bit of hardware that passes through the shock. You have an O-ring that goes over the top of that. And then you will have alloy adapters or shims to pass over the top to make sure the shock is actually the perfect width for the shock mount. Now you do get slightly different orientations of these. Uh, what you likely see are these little crush washers, uh, which as you imagine, they're very slightly oversized to ensure a good fit, but when you clamp it together, it just means you've got good pressure and there's gonna be no play on the system. Now they all vary very slightly, but the one other unit you might see is a standard duty. As I said, on most shocks these days you tend to see heavy duty, but a standard duty will have the bushing uh, that's in the actual shock, whether it's the poly or the DU, and you have these little aluminium top hats, which then push in and the bolt passes through these. Now these are great and you can fit these by hand, uh, but the downside is they do wear out fairly easily. So the heavier duty option, although they're harder to fit, last much longer and they do make a bit more sense. You can also get what's known as offset bushes as well, which is actually slightly misleading because the bush itself that pushes into the shock, that is no different to a usual one, but the hardware is very slightly different. So when you look uh, straight down at the hardware here where the bolt will pass through, for an offset one, you'll find that hole is slightly offset. So what that enables is the shock mounting to be very slightly different, which can change the seat angle and head angle on your bike. Uh, it's a very subtle choice, uh, but it will make a bit of a difference in terms of handling on your bike. And if you're stuck with your geometry and you don't want to change anything like the headset or the fork travel, it's a great option for tweaking your geometry. And also, Specs on some bikes, you might see these little cups that push into the shocks themselves. Again, you will still have the, the bush that passes into the shock and you have this little bearing mount that goes in place, uh, basically allowing uh, for the little freedom of small bump sensitivity on certain suspension designs. Again, not on all bikes, but um, pretty cool when you do see them. Now for actual mounting hardware, uh, the dimensions can sound a bit confusing. So if we just use our M8 by 30, for example, uh, the M8 will refer to the size of the bolt or the external size of the bolt that passes through the hardware. So this is the hardware that goes to the shock and it's obviously hollow. Uh, the M8 will be the diameter of the bolt that can fit through there and the 30 will be the width. So just to clarify, you've got your shock here, you'll have a bush that passes through the hardware, then passes through that. So the 30 in this case will be the width that this occupies in your frame, whether it's at the front or at the back where the rocker is. And the M8 will be the size of the bolt that goes through. Yours might be an M6 by 50, for example. And then tools for actually changing this. The only real specialist thing that you will need is one of these bushing removal tools. Uh, there's a few different styles on the market. I got this one for TF Tuned. Uh, I've had one of these for many years. It works really well, it's served very well, uh, and look after it. Uh, you will also need a soft-ended mallet from time to time. You can fit some of the components like that. I always prefer to use a vise and a tool myself though. Uh, you can get by by using something like these from Knipex, an adjustable locking plier. It's a good idea for confirming your measurements. Get yourself some digital calipers or verniers uh, to make sure you've got a measurement. You don't need any other specialist tools other than this. Uh, it's the only one that you need. Uh, there's going to be a link to this one in the description underneath, but there's loads of different options available to you online. So the poly bushings or the Igus ones, you can literally take them out with a screwdriver. Now, of course, you want to take care to not scratch the inner surface. Now, they're generally quite easy to get out and given when you take them out, they're going to be worn. It doesn't matter too much what happens to them. Uh, but as you can see, that one is out. And just to show you ease of how you can put them back in, you can literally push them in place just like that. Now, with the DE bush, uh, as you can see, this is a fresh one here and the eyelet has nothing in there. So I'm just going to insert it onto the tool, pass the tool through the eyelet there. And then the thing you want to just take care of in this is make sure that no part of your shock body can get scuffed. Uh, so note that it's got a chamfered edge on this particular brand. So it just helps things along the way. And then you just want to monitor it as it goes in and then just slowly bring it into place and you should find it naturally stops in the correct place. And you have your DU right in place as it should be. And it's the exact same principle to remove it. You just go the opposite direction. But well, there we go. 
hopefully everything you need to know about bushings, offset bushings, uh, and all that stuff, and how to fit them yourselves at home. As I said, the most important thing is to make sure you've got the correct tool. Yes, I'm sure your friend will tell you you can do this with sockets and other sort of uh, heath robbers and things, but you'll never beat the correct tool for the job, and they don't cost a lot of money. Uh, so if you're confident enough to tackle that, get one of those and get involved. Uh, please do let us know in the comments how you get on, and of course, if you have any issues or if there's anything you'd like us to make with rear shocks or front forks, uh, let us know in the comments under there and we'll see you in another video soon. See you later.